What's good everyone? Good news, we just hit 500 subs, which is ginormous. We've absolutely just blown up over the past couple of weeks, which is insane. Thank you guys, it's honestly really great. So make sure to keep liking the videos if you like them, and you know, tell other people that series if you think they might find it interesting, or whatever you want to do. Anyway, we've been playing Preservation on the Evoker, the Chrono Warden Hero Talents. It's been going pretty well. Today we've got the Grim Batol run. It's a little bit of a you know, guide thing like I've been doing. I'm going to do one of each and then, you know, if anyone asks if I made them, there you go, there's your guide. Let me know what format you want after I've done, like, all the guides. There's only, like, I think only four more dungeons that I need to do. And they're very simple, honestly. Very, very simple. And if you have any ideas of formats I should do, or if you just want full runs from bigger keys, let me know in the comments, boys. Anyway, enough yapping, let's get into it. Seem to be missing the first part of the video, I don't know what happened there. Seems to be deleted itself, but that's alright. Anyway, Earth Callers, you want to kick as often as you can, especially Mass Tremor. That hurts a lot, it's group-wide damage, just does a lot of damage. Once you jump to this dragon stage, you have two abilities. Number one deals 10% of their max health, and number two does 2%. I'd say nuke that dragon at the start, because the dragons hurt a lot, and knock people off the edge a bit too frequently. And number one is also off the GCD, so you can use that whilst you're spamming two. And that, just keep blasting, spam as much as you can. And don't forget a little free pack here of Earth Callers, because they can also mess you up pretty hard. Make sure you use all five charges of number one. Righty, first boss. Pretty simple, but I can get a bit dicey sometimes. Commanding roll hits everyone pretty damn hard, and he summoned three dragons. There is one safe spot that won't have any purple crap on the ground. That's where you run to, and you'll be right. Rock Spike, it will leave stuff on the ground that will slow you, so try and keep it to the edges as much as you can. It will also knock you forward as well, so if you're facing off the edge you will get knocked off. Skull Splitter is the Tank Buster, it does some decent damage and leaves a big bleed, so just keep Tank topped off and you'll be good. You just need to keep rinsing and repeating this whole back and forth dance and you'll be right. Just watch out for the Rock Spike, big damn hits and the dot it leaves on the ground. Alrighty, these guys are just after the first boss. They will spam Shadow Flame Bolt, which hits pretty hard, but the main thing is Seer Mind. There's a 5 second channel stun. Try and interrupt as much as you can. The big guy will hit everyone with an AoE and then hit the tank with Lava Fist. That will do like 6 million damage. So if you don't have defensives up or anything, it will hurt you pretty bad. If you're a prop warrior, you can spell Deflect It. You used to be able to reflect it for a good 5 million at least. But I guess they nerf that some time, but you can deflect it so it just doesn't hit you at all.
Alrighty, second boss. Main mechanics are forge weapon. He'll just do heavy AOE damage to everyone. Just keep everyone healed up. Fiery Cleave, it is a frontal. Aim it away from the middle of the room so you can save as much room as you can because it will leave fire whenever he does a melee attack. And that is technically the main mechanic. A little bit of a tank buster, Molten Flurry. He just smacks the tank around pretty hard and then leaves Molten Sparks on everyone but the tank. You want to put these at the edge of the room preferably, save as much room, and they do decent dot damage and leave a very heavy damage pool, so don't stand in that. Molten Mace is the only other thing Tank needs to do other than keep himself alive, is run away and not get bonked like this guy here, because if he does hit you once, you're dead. But we kill him anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And try and kite him around the edge of the room, along the edge. Just don't get too close or he will kill you. Okay, some notable mobs after Frongus. These lava benders, they ascend at 50% health and absolutely do nuts AoE damage. The Twilight Enforcers, the big red ogres, they will stack up a melee attack speed buff and they will shred through your tank as you will see here. He will just drop, no chance of healing him, even spam healing. They can be stunned or kited, preferably stunned. And there's a few other casters and the beguilers again. So kick your mind, just kick everything, stun everything. Best way to do it here and burst those lava benders down. Just before the third boss, there's two lava benders. Target one, kill it, and then kill the other one. And that's the best way to not take absurd amounts of damage, especially on fortified wigs or fortified keys. They do nuts damage, AoE, and when they ascend, they pop, and then they pulse fire damage as well, but it just hurts. So one at a time, preferably, unless you're mentally just insane in the membrane. Okay, on to the third boss. He will spam Shadow Flame bolts all throughout this thing. There is two phases as well. Invocation of Shadow Flame, he will summon a Shadow Flame elemental and they will walk at you. If they touch you, if they're fixating you, they will pop and do massive damage. Curse of Entropy will just put a healing absorb on and slow you down. Once Veliona is up, he will just cast the same stuff but from her back and she has two extra abilities. One will hurt very very bad and that is Twilight Buffet, or Twilight Buffet as some people like to call it. Mm, yummy. And it will spawn Twilight Winds and they will hurt very very bad. Do not touch them. I touch them a tiny bit in this and you'll just see my health absolutely disappear along with other people's too. Devouring Flame is a big frontal as well. Do not stand in it. You'll probably just die in one hit. Other than that, dodge, dodge the flames, dodge the elementals, and heal everyone up, and you'll be right.
All right, the last packs before the last boss. Twilight Corruptor. These swirlies, they will cast Mind Piercer. That will mind control you, just like this DK here. You are very welcome to kill them because they will die as punishment for not staying, not getting out the swirly. He was died there. And they will cast, I think it's called Mind Piece. No, Mind Piece here is the swirlies. The corrupt, sorry, is the single target thing. This one here, and it hurts very bad. Keep healing them a lot. And that's all you can do. Last boss, Void Surge. Hits everyone very hard and spawns tentacles everywhere. Don't touch them or they'll stun you. Shadow Gale, you will see the circle closing in. Sort of run towards where it's closing in and there's a little circle and you'll be safe there. Don't be like this pally tank and pop blessing and protection and almost kill two people. Very troll. Anyway, Abyssal Corruption, big AoE damage. Don't stay near anyone else, it will hurt very bad. Need some big heals. Void Infusion, he will summon mobs. When they die, they'll leave a debuff on you. And Crush is the main tank buster. It hurts very hard and knocks you back. So if you get knocked back into a tentacle, it will stun you and you'll probably just die. that's all for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video honestly that was a bit of a stinky run but whatever we got the video done and we got the grim toll guy done so that is lovely and if you want to see me live don't forget you can catch me live from 7 p.m australian eastern onwards on monday wednesday and friday here on youtube and live at twitch.tv slash willpowerroz I'm glad you guys have been enjoying the series. Don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to sub if you want to follow the series as well. Anyway, see you guys in the next video, which is Hunter, and I'll see you there. Peace.